Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and I'm gonna be showing you in this graphics tutorial video how to get granular control over independent layers um, to easily adjust scale. Um, in this example, scale. In other examples, you could use this, you can do color. Um, but basically, um, there's been tutorials online on, on how to do this. They're a little bit different. Actually, they're pretty different and they use some different um, effects, but uh, I'm using the one from this guy's name Dan from motionscripts.com. He is uh, He's an expression master. I see him referenced all the time online. Um, I found him from creativecow.com or .net. Um, but anyways, I'll link this down in the description. He uses this 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 uh, this expression, which is sample image on these arrows, right? So this is his little tutorial. And basically he shows you how to how to find the color of the background at the position where the arrow is and then change the color of the arrow to that color. I'm not going to be doing color, I'm going to be doing scale, but it's the similar, you know, similar type idea. He's got the um, the code down here as well as a really good description on exactly how it works. Um, again, this is a built-in function of After Effects sample image um, and you can go ahead and read this. I highly recommend it. You will learn a lot, especially for motionscript.com and this guy named Dan. So. Uh, all credit goes to Dan, but I will be adjusting this script a little bit to for my needs because I don't need color. So again, I need well, I, I need color, but I'll show you what I mean in a second. So um, we're just going to open up After Effects here. I have just a scale, square composition. You can make yours whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to be going into super detail on this because you should know how to do a lot of the things that I'm showing you, um, like centering up anchor points and stuff. You don't. You should know this by now. So um, I'm just going to hold Shift and kind of create a a ellipse. I'm just going to center up the anchor point here. Um, throughout this tutorial, I will be using this motion script from Mount MoGraph. Uh, it's really great. I use it all the time. Um, I highly recommend it. If you don't have it, you know, you can set up the anchor point in, every, in any, any way that you that you desire. So um, obviously, as you know, there's two ways to adjust scale or of a layer. One is scale and the other one is in here in, in size. So my scale is going to be controlled by a separate layer. Um, it's going to be kind of like um, all of my all of my little circles will be controlled by a single gradient, right? So I'm going to need a way to control the size of them globally without having to. I mean, what if my gradient scales them down too much and I want them to be bigger? If they're locked away in a, in a, an expression, then it's going to be kind of a nightmare. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go layer new, null object, and I'm just going to rename this to size control. And basically, I'm just going to, while holding Alt, click on this size parameter, and that will allow me to do, add an expression. And I'm just going to, uh, let's see, um, actually what I need to do first probably is add a slider control. So I'm just going to search in my effects and presets for slider control, place that onto the size control. And uh, I'm just going to grab this pick whip from the expression under size that I got. And I'm just going to slide it up to slider. So obviously it went to zero because the slider controls at zero, but I'm just going to increase that. So, okay, so now we have a way to control the size of these without having to mess with the script that we're going to create in a second. Um, so I'm just going to create a new background, layer new solid. Um, I'm going to make it white, hit OK. And I'm going to drag it beneath and I'm going to rename this to gradient. So coming in here, I'm just going to search for uh, ramp and this will pull up gradient ramp. I'm just gonna drag this onto the background here. And I'm just gonna show you kind of first thing about how this thing works. So I'm gonna open this up, I'm gonna close these, I don't really need to see those. And I'm gonna find scale in here. I'm just gonna hold alt and click scale. So let me open up my script that I need to remember. And so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to uh, add, add an effect here, not an effect. I'm gonna add an expression here. So again, this is based on dance, but I did adjust it a little bit. So I'm gonna do X equals, so this comp. So basically I'm gonna say, hey, check out, look in this composition for this layer, gradient. Yours might be named different, but again, I'm pointing to this layer. Alternatively, I could just highlight this and go to gradient. And then I'm gonna search, not search, but I'm just gonna type sample image parentheses transform dot position. So again, I'm saying, look at this composition, look at this layer, gradient layer. Now to that layer, 
I'm gonna be using a sample image. The first parameter of the sample image is position. So I'm saying look at the position of my sample of my shape layer one. So look at the position of the current layer at this pixel size. So one pixel by one pixel. I'm gonna divide that by two to get half a pixel by half a pixel. True and time. So I need this time and I'm gonna close that off. But now what I'm gonna do is this is my additional aspect is I'm going to just turn that to zero in brackets, press enter, do 100 times x comma x, end bracket, and it does not work. So let's see. Okay, there is clearly, okay, I spelled position wrong there. So position was spelled wrong. Okay, so now with this little shape, I could drag this around here and it's basically pulling the dark level of the background. So when this is all the way at the bottom, right, we're approaching one, the, we're approaching as white as you can get. That's a scale of 100% because it's 100% white. And if I drag this to the top, it approaches 0% scale. So 0% white, which is exactly what I want. So let me see, just drag this down here. So um, just kind of to illustrate a little bit a little bit more, I'm just gonna create a text layer, eight, so you can put whatever you want. And I'm just gonna open this up and adjust the source text holding alt. And I'm just gonna copy in part of the expression and paste it in. And you'll see here, I need to scale this down because it's so much, but this is all of the information we're getting from the color. We're getting a four piece, a four a size four array with, uh, with different colors here. So if this gradient was actually like, I don't know, red and blue, you'll see that the colors, you know, you're getting all aspects, all four pieces of the, of the color um, on that position. But um, again, since we're black and white, we will have just, you know, they're all the same because it's, there's no color piece of this. So, um, that's the information I'm getting from this. What I'm doing here is I'm turning this into a string and then I'm using that number and for my X and my Y and I'm multiplying it by 100 because this is only 5.5, I need this to be 50. So that's kind of how this expression works. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm going to select this gradient and I'm gonna, tur I'm gonna turn the effect of the gradient off so I could kind of uh, deal with my shapes and create a grid here. So dragging this into the corner here, I'm gonna use my size control. And since this is white, this is my base color. So I'm just gonna, so that's a good size actually. I'm just making the, the overall size, my standard size using my slider control um, on my size controller. So what I'm also gonna do is to create a new layer, layer new solid. And I'm gonna search for grid. And it just is just gonna generate a grid for me on top and I'm gonna change the color to black. Um, while I'm here, I should probably, uh, let's see, make it so I can adjust this a little bit more. I'm just gonna adjust this until I think that it's a good enough grid. That looks fine. And I'm just using this basically as a template. So bringing my transparency down on my shape, which I should probably rename to just dot. Uh, I'm gonna rename this to grid. I won't need the grid later on but uh, just locking those two layers so I don't actually grab them. I'm just going to start uh, centering these up. So I'm just gonna duplicate these all the way across and then duplicate them down. Um, you could do a polka dot uh, type thing in, uh, in Illustrator, but the problem is, is that all the scripts that I just added, I'm duplicating those. So they're all being baked into these layers. Um, and also the size control controls all of them as well. So. Um, that's kind of the benefit of doing it by hand. It does take a lot longer to do the dots. Um, I did mess with some, some use of CC ball action to get my grid. But again, you just don't really get the granular, um, you just don't really get the granular control that, that you're looking for because each ball is attached to the same layer and the scale of that layer would be adjusted, not the scale of the ball. So, uh, that's kind of the downside of doing it that way. And so therefore it won't work. So once these are all here, I'm just gonna duplicate these down. And, you know, depending on, you know, the importance of this, you may wanna make this more perfect than I am. 
um, but I'm just duplicating these down here. And while I'm here, uh, I'm gonna note that this is a very layer heavy effect and therefore it will slow down after effects. So make sure you're saving it all the time. And I don't know which tutorial this is. I think it's tutorial 57, I think, um, but uh, it could be wrong. So anyways, I'm just gonna keep going here, control D. Uh, there we are. Actually, I'm just going to delete this bottom layer because we don't need those. And uh, I'm just going to come down here to this grid and now I can get rid of my grid. I don't really need it anymore. Okay, so now I have a polka dot layer here. Perfect. I have my gradient, which is also perfect. And I'm going to need, let's see, I'm going to need a background layer. So this gradient here, I'm just going to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename this to background. I'm going to bring this beneath the gradient and I'm just going to delete the gradient ramp on that layer because I don't need a gradient ramp on the background. So now let's me show you what this does. Boom. When I click on that gradient, you'll see that the closer it is to black, the smaller it is. And what's great about this is I could actually make that gradient invisible and you know, it still works. So the way you would animate this, so I'm just going to select this gradient layer, control shift C. I'm gonna go move all attributes to new composition. And it died. And the reason why it died is because I'm gonna rename this to just gradient because it does not know where that gradient layer went. There you go. Um, because again, these all reference a layer called gradient, but that layer is gone. So I'm just gonna open this here. And uh, actually, now that I think about it, I probably don't really need this gradient ramp any longer. Um, what I'm actually gonna be doing is I'm gonna create a circle and I'm just gonna drag this out and set up the anchor point and then center it in the composition. Uh, if I could figure out how to use my align tool. Um, now I'm just going to increase the radius of the stroke, make the fill zero and I'm gonna add a blur. Gaussian blur. I'm actually gonna do fast blur because it's a little bit quicker. I'm just gonna increase the blur on that. And what this basically, that blur does is one, it will allow this to scale gradually and the black won't be so black, so it won't be so tiny, right? So to control the size here, if I open this back up um, and make that layer invisible, uh, you'll see, I might think that those are too small, so I could actually open this up and decrease the transparency and that will adjust the scale. So transparency of this adjusts the, the scale level. Um, if I duplicate this, make it really dark, they get really tiny. So um, I'm just gonna bring the opacity down and opening this here, I'm just gonna go into contents, ellipse. Uh, what do I need? I need transform, no, I need size. So I'm just gonna set a size keyframe. Um, not holding alt, there's no need to hold alt when I do that. I just control Z that away. Set a size keyframe, set this to zero, and then go to three seconds and bring that all the way out. And I can kind of add some smoothing to this. Just like that. And I could duplicate this layer and kind of move them over. And I could change the transparency here. Kind of curious what happens when we get a couple of these kind of overlapping. And then when I come back into this comp, you'll see that we are going to have a very slow composition. So I'm just gonna save this again and I'm gonna hit play. And you'll see there that you get really, really cool control over like a radial scaling. I think that it just looks really awesome. It doesn't have to be circular, right? I mean, th this, could come from anywhere. I mean, this could be a, a linear wipe. I mean, it could be, I'm, I'm just using radial, like a radial effect, but uh, I don't know. This just, I think just looks really awesome. Uh, I, I don't know why, but it just does to me. So anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give this video a like, subscribe, and check out other videos on this channel. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.